tonight, um, my presentation will be about Islam and Muslims. And we'll have um, a little discussion here. Um, the main things I would just like to go over tonight is what does the word Islam mean? And what does the word Muslim mean? I'll go over the major beliefs. What do Muslim people do? How do they practice their faith? And, and, their pra and things they do on a daily basis. Uh, the clothing, uh, I'll go over the clothing, the hijab, uh, as most of you see nowadays, and the different styles. And I'll go over some of the relationships that we have as Muslims, and also the marriages we conduct and how we conduct it. And also I'll go over a little bit of the diets and foods that we eat and the one that we abstain from. And finally, it'll be the conclusion and you can ask any questions as long as it's easy. <laughs> if it's hard, I'm walking away. <laughs> um, so, when we want to understand other people or other faith, sometimes our understanding is high and sometimes our understanding is low. But when our understanding is low, that's where we have an open heart to get to know another person or to get to know your neighbor. And the more we build our understanding, the better it is for all of us so that we know what boundaries not to overstep with each other. So the first thing I want to go over tonight is um, Islam is one of the religions worldwide. And Islam comes from the Arabic word Salam. And that word Salam means peace. And so it is also derived from Silam. So Silam means to submit your will to God Almighty. So those two words, Salam, which means peace, and Silam, which means to submit your will to God Almighty. And so in short, the word Islam means peace acquired by submitting yourself to God Almighty. And the reference to that is in the Quran um, in chapter 3 and uh, verse 19. That's where you'll find the reference of the word Islam. Next is Muslim. The word Muslim is a person who submits their will to the Almighty God. So Muslim is the one who practices Islam. So a person cannot be Islam, but they can be Muslim. So um, that's, the diff that's where the difference comes. And also the reference to that is in the Quran, and chapter 3, verse 64. Islam, the religion Islam, is built on five pillars. Just like a car is built with four tires. So Islam is built in five major pillars. The first pillar is called the Shahada. So say after me, Shahada. Shahada. There you go. And Shahada is the creed. Shahada means to believe that there is one God, his name is Allah. And to believe that Prophet Muhammad was the last and final messenger. And later I'll go over all the prophets. But the first one is the Shahada again, to believe that there is one God, Allah, and his last prophet being Muhammad. The second one is Salah. Salah is prayers. So Muslim people pray, supposed to pray, five times a day. The first one comes in early in the morning. It's called Fajr. It comes in right now in the summer around 5 to 6 a.m. It comes in really early. And when the winter time changes, it comes in a little bit later. So the time always changes based on the seasons that we have. But it's early in the morning before the sun comes up. So that's called Fajr. And then there's a midday prayer 
um, when the sun comes up in the, in the, it's in the middle um, of the sky, like right where it shines really bright. So that one is called the midday prayer. And then the third prayer comes in the late afternoon. And that is called the Asr prayer. Right now we pray about 5 o'clock and in the winter maybe 2 hours early. The fourth prayer comes when the sun is going down. So we call it the sunset, sunset prayer. And the fifth prayer comes in when the sun goes down and becomes dark. So we call it the night prayer. So the question arises that how do people with different professions every single day how do they cover all these five prayers some people are at school some people are at work how do they do it the way the way it's done is each prayer has a window that you can pray in accepted so the morning prayer you have once it begins like let's say five o'clock you have about an hour and a half till the sun really comes up so you have that window to pray the second prayer you can pray until the third prayer comes so you have like three four hours three about three hours and a half to pray so if you have a class you don't have to pray exactly the time it comes in because you're in a class you can pray after your class because you have, you have that window before the other prayer comes in the third prayer same before the other prayer comes in the sunset prayer it has a small window you have to pray before it becomes dark and the night prayer you have the whole night to pray and so when you have things to do that are important that's where you can use the rule of praying within the window of those prayers so that's the second uh, pillar of Islam the third pillar is called fasting each year once a month um, we fast about 30 days and we count every other ninth month in the Islamic calendar so this year we fasted about May and it ended on June so each year it comes one month earlier so we fast 30 days we fast from down to sunset um, the two times that we eat is down and we eat water or whatever that you can eat at that, at that time and the next time we eat is when the sunset goes down and we also don't drink water so some countries where it's really hot they fast about 19 20 hours a day without even water so the winter over here is much easier because we break off fast by 4:30. Um, there are a number of lists that are exempted to not to fast like the elderly um, women who are breastfeeding women who are pregnant someone who's sick someone who is uh, traveling on a journey um, all those are example of um, people who are exempt uh, not to fast but um, they can make it up when they are able to do so the third one uh, I mean the fourth one is uh, called pilgrimage so that is where m Muslim people they go to Mecca and they perform pilgrimage around the uh, black stone that you see and they do that once in their lifetime if you do that once in a lifetime it's accepted and even by doing that you have to have the means to do so if you don't have the means to do so then it doesn't become obligatory on you it's obligatory only if you have the chance the physical body and the means to do so and the last one is paying alms um, charity um, you know helping the poor people um, helping your neighbors helping a friend in need um, those are things that we are obligated to do and in the Islamic religion we also have something called six pillars of belief the other one were five pillars that the that we do on an action re regularly this one is what we believe inside the heart the first one is once again believe in the oneness of God the second one is believe in all the prophets so we believe um, on Moses we believe in Jesus we believe in Muhammad peace be upon him we believe in Noah um, Isaiah all these prophets we believe in them 
And we also believe that they had one mission, and their mission was to call people to God, to call people to do righteous acts, and to call people to make sure that they are um, good with, within themselves, within their families, and within their neighbors. But the main mission was to call them to worship God Almighty. That was the uniqueness between all the prophets. The third one is to believe all the books that God had revealed. The Torah, Injil, the Quran, all the books that God has revealed before, we believe in all of them. And the Quran being the last one as the final message to all of humanity. The fifth one is to believe in the life after death. So we believe in a day called the day of judgment where all humans will come before God and they will be judged according to everybody's deeds. And so we say at the end of the day, it's God who judges, not any human. And the last belief is to believe in the predestination, things that has been written for you by God, things that you can avoid that was part of your life. So that's called predestination. So that is the six pillars of belief and the other one was the five pillars in action. We want to cover worship. So Muslims again, Allah is the only, one and only, that one God that we worship. And Allah is the name of the one and only God that Muslims worship. There is a verse and a chapter in the Quran, it's chapter 112. 1400 years ago in Mecca, people had different, you know, gods that they were worshipping. So one of the um, neighbors at that time approached a person who was a Muslim and he told them that we worship this God and this God. So we want you to tell us what God that you worship. And he was asking that to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told him about the verse that God has revealed that says, say he, Allah, is one. He is self-sufficient and everlasting. He gave birth to no one and no one gave birth to him. And there is nothing that comparable to God. So that is how Muslims believe in the one and only Allah. So we are in a mission always, in a worship mission 24-7. Some of the examples I can give of this spiritual involvement that we have is from the beginning part of the day till the end, we are always uttering or saying something. Example, we say something when we get up from our sleep. When we get up from our sleep, we praise God for giving us another opportunity of life and for giving us another opportunity to walk and do things for that day. And at the end of the day, when we sleep, we, get, we thank God for this comfort, um, and giving us, a, giving us a whole day of worshipping Him. And before we put on our clothes in the morning, we also have a saying to thank God about the clothing He has provided us with. And before we eat, we also thank God again um, for the meal He has provided us. Before we leave our house, we ask God for protection to protect us until we come back home. And then when we come back home, we say something else, which, uh, which means Thank you for the protection that you have protected me for the whole day. And then another quick example, if, if there's something in hardship in your life, we say something else for us, God, to make it easy. So that's why I mentioned here that the whole day we are in a mission of worship, saying something to just thank God for another opportunity. The primary motivation for wearing the hijab for women is, is a commandment of God. When God commands us to do something, is supposed to be followed. So this is one of the commandments of, of God for women to cover um, from head to toe. It is also a sign of being modest and it's also an expression of identity. Islamic head covering, as you saw in the other picture, vary from culture to culture. But there is no contradiction that they have within, within the rules. So women who choose to cover, they do it by their own will, by their own choice. Their husbands or father or brothers don't force them. 
They do it because they want to do it. Men must also cover um, in, our, in the Islamic guidelines from neck to below the knees and women again from the head to toe excluding the hands and the face. In this um, slide I want to talk about um, relationships. The most important relationship is the relationship you can have with God. And that's why we pray the five times prayer every, every day. And that's why we are on a worship um, saying something to thank God every, every single day. So that is the most important relationship that we have. And in Islam, men and women are equal. With each one having different responsibilities in their life. And each one is respected with his or her responsibility. So the Quran makes it clear that women and men are equal in the eyes of God. One is not superior than the other one. And in the Quran, there's a whole chapter that talks about the woman, and that is chapter 4. And there is also another chapter, chapter 19, that talks about the mother of Jesus. So that shows us that women are very important in the Islamic religion as well. Muslims get married by the Islamic way called nikah, uh, translated in wedlock. And it is performed by an imam or by a learned person. And it is the will of the person to choose or pick who they are wanting to marry. Nobody, the parents, or the family don't force upon someone to marry someone they don't want. Again, it is the choice of the person whom they are wanting to marry. And in Islam, dating in a private matter in the Islamic religion is not allowed. So both parties get to know each other in the presence of a family member, maybe a brother, a sister, an auntie. Not exactly right next to them, but a distance. <laughs> Give me my distance, okay? <laughs> so, um, just so that um, there's respect and, you know, um, the families is there. And that's how we do it in the Islamic religion, within the family member. And then we go from there, then the Imam comes in. And then once they agree, we go to the mosque and the Imam performs the wedding. The diet and food. The general rule in Islam is you are allowed to eat anything unless it is, there is a prohibition from it, unless God has prohibited. And the primary motivation for abstaining from certain food again and drink is to obey the commands of God, that God told, it to, told us to stay away from this and that, and so we follow those commands. Because we believe at the end of the day, God who created us knows what's best for us. So in Islam, um, we, are, we don't eat the pork meat. It's not allowed for us to eat. Uh, meats from animals that die on themselves, we also can eat that. And predatory animals such as lions, tigers, and birds of prey such as falcons and hawks, those we don't eat as well. And the last thing is the consumption of alcohol we are not allowed to um, drink alcohol as well. In the early stages of Islam, when alcohol was not prohibited, um, some of the people used to drink and then they used to go to the prayers. And then there's a verse that was revealed saying do not go to the prayers while you are intoxicated. So that, that was stopped. And then after years, the prohibition came that from this point on, God said the drinking of alcohol is prohibited. And once again, we do it because it's the commandment of God Almighty. So Islam is both functional and practical. It is functional because it is woven throughout the day, as we spoke about it earlier. And it is physical and practical because we use our limbs to perform certain spiritual aspects. In my conclusion, I would like to state that 
Islam is like a complete way of life. It provides guidance on everything that we do every single day in our life because Islam for us is like a way of life.